Wham Ninja Mole Hill, aka John. Say hello. 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 Um, okay, that's saying hello twice, but you know, it's still saying hello. <laughs> you said hello four times, and then two more times after that. Yes. Well, you know, I like to go really. I, it's just because I like to go above and beyond what's requested of me. Like I like to, <laughs> I like to meet and exceed expectations. Right on. So tonight, <laughs> um, it's a little different. We're going to be doing some casual conversation in a yeah. podcast-like format, along with right. some co-op gameplay. Pretty much exactly. We are we are going to shoot the shits while we shoot the shits in Doom. <laughs> Shoot the shit while shooting the shoot, demons. Shoot, shoot at the shit while shooting the shit. Um, if that makes sense. Yes. So I guess we'll start off. How did you get into Doom? Well, uh, I would say Doom is... Pro oh, there's a shotgun right here? I did not know that. Sorry, just side tangent, but I had no idea there was actually a shotgun in this corner right here. I guess that's a co-op thing. Yeah, co-op placement it is extremely different, and I'm down to 34 health already. With one hit, you should you should uh, you should grab this armor up here because you might need it more than I do right now. This uh, is how did I get into Doom? Yes. So, Doom and Wolfenstein 3D were the first computer games I ever played. Uh, if you don't count like Jez Ball, but I don't really count that. Two but... of my three favorite games of all time: Wolfenstein 3D and Doom. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna happen a couple of times. That's gonna happen a lot. Um, so my so when I was growing up, this must have been I mean this must have been ninety three. So I was just to age myself a little bit here. I was in ninety three, about seven years old. Damn. Uh, and my dad had a black and white Windows three point one laptop. It had no sound card, and uh, the mouse was actually attached to the side of the screen. It was a rolling ball. And that was how you operated the mouse. And they only had one button. I don't think they even had right-click back then. I've seen anyway. various photos of such a mouse. Ooh, rocket God, launcher. There's a rocket launcher here? <laughs> and lots of take, rockets. I'm going to take a little bit of that shotgun ammo because I was a little bit low. But uh, you're welcome to take this box. I'm going to take so, the anyway. armor because fuck. Anyways. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. I'm, yeah. Doing, I'm doing okay on that. Um, I will like, take one of these boxes of rockets just because I'm running low on that too. It was one of them um, compact laptops, right? Uh, you know, I'm trying to remember the brand. I don't really remember what brand it was, I've, but uh, yeah. um, but it was it was a laptop, and, it, and again, it had no sound card. So if anybody has played Doom with the PC speaker, <laughs> I was very familiar with that. I didn't even know what Doom sounded like until they actually released Doom on the Super Nintendo. That oh. was the first time I ever actually heard Doom sounds, and that S was quite a revelation for me. SNES uh, Doom as like the number one. The music in SNES Doom is freaking fantastic. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not a bad translation at all. Um, yeah, I remember at least. It's actually a an really interesting way of sampling. I gotta look that up sometime and send it to you. Yeah, because I know it used like the thirty two X. Like it was the same chip that they were bo boasting about with uh, Star Fox and everything. They were like, yeah, we can we can do Star Fox. We can do Doom. I think even Wolfenstein might have been powered off of that thing. Anyway, but uh, yeah, well, Super FX chip. Was... Yeah, the Super FX. That's what it was called. Yes. Um, that but was yeah, special so, in the cartridge. So I was playing, at that point, you know, this was all floppy disks, and my brother has all the floppy disks now, but um, like I, I had a share, this was not, not even the full version of Doom. I had the shareware version of Doom, and I had uh, the full version, the full six episodes of uh, Wolfenstein 3D. So that's just, yeah, those are the first two PC games I ever played, was, was first-person shooters. Um, not this is not the first video games I used. I you know grew up with a uh, Super Nintendo and all that, so I played a lot of that too. But um, you know, but like as far as computer gaming was concerned, Doom was the first, and there's that that's the reason why I think today it's still like one of my favorite games, just because you know it's 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 been with me for as long as I can remember shit. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. And then eventually, uh, we eventually got our first computer, which was like a Windows ninety five machine. And that our first games for that. Now that we have like a sound card and, and a monitor and everything and an actual mouse, uh, the first two games I got for that were Warcraft Two and nice. Doom Two. Nice. Yeah, and Doom Two is your favorite game of all time, right? Doom Two is definitely my favorite game of all time. Yes. Uh, like I, in my opinion, I mean, here's the thing. I think that Doom One 
number one obviously is a revolutionary game and an historically a significant game on like and that's like putting no, it lightly it's like it's a revolutionary game everybody everybody can can everybody can agree with that i think but like John. And, and like in the and the sound design and the weapon design well not the weapon design but like the sound design and the like music and and the level design especially was all amazing in this game um i think actually even better than in the second game but the second game i just felt like was the definitive version of doom like it had the super shotgun it had all the different new enemies that yeah. were way more challenging and added a lot more variety to the game I found the red key card. This, nice. Wait a minute. Actually, this is the first level in the game that has a key card, isn't it? Yes, it is. This is the very first key card you ever find in Doom right here is is the red card. And that's something very, very special. That is, it is very special. I mean, it's like, well, I mean, Wolfenstein had a key system, but I mean, like, you know, it's this is just, it's the first key you ever find in Doom. I mean, kind of speaking about Wolfenstein and Doom for a second here, because I mean, it's really interesting seeing the progression of where they went from doom and oh yes here it is chain doom gun chain gun uh it's really interesting just kind of seeing where they went from like wolfenstein to this because like you can see the art style is very similar in terms of like i don't know like the design of, of the enemies you fight there, there are some similarities between wolfenstein and doom at least in like overall feel of how the characters look but like uh, i mean obviously the gameplay and the setting is a, is a lot different but um yeah, I don't know. I always thought that was interesting. Just that mm -hmm. you can clearly see it's made by the same people. Like there's just distinct, distinct feeling to it. But... Like stylistic similarities. Like the yes, the HUD, absolutely. for example, is very much like okay, this is like Wolfenstein times ten. You're right. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I mean, well, basically, I was gonna say like I I just think Doom Two. The reason why I think the big reason why Doom Two is one of my favorite games of all time, though, is is not so much the nostalgia, although that's a I mean that is a part of it for sure. But like, I think just the fact that you can change Doom Two into so many different things because of modding, and I mean, and modding was pretty. I, I started getting into modding, I guess. I mean, pretty shortly after Doom Two came out. Like I, I mean, because I know the source code was released in in ninety seven, but even before then there were mods. Wait, but like I, the source? I don't think no. The source code was ninety eight, man. Was it 98? It was sometime around there. The source like, was 98, like, but mods were came out instantly, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, like, because, like, they, there was already tools for all that kind of stuff, like, where there was, like, dehacked mods and things like Ooh. that. And then, but I don't remember getting into any of them until, yeah, right around the late 90s, early 2000s. That's when I started, like, number one, experimenting with my own stuff. That's what that's kind of where Cube came from and all that yeah. stuff. Check out but, the uh, uh, secret over here. You're, you're close, over here. Oh, yeah. I forgot about this secret, actually. There's only a backpack in single player. Yeah. So yeah, the mentioning cube. Oh, um, oh yeah. Well, I was just gonna say that right, right around the late '90s and early 2000s is when I started really like getting into mods in general. Like, cause right. that's that's when I experimented with that with cube, and then that's also when... and sphere. Don't forget sphere. <laughs> and sphere. <laughs> which, which, is, which is not which is maybe an okay concept but a terrible video which actually i actually go, I have to go ahead and say that i ended up removing that video from my my channel oh uh, well i still have a copy of it but um I'm, I'm considering redoing that video um in the future and some point and actually making a better a better and maybe i'll even use the old crappy footage since i still have it just for a frame of reference of like if you're wondering why i'm redoing this then here's the old video <laughs> And like just showing a clip of it or something and but how bad it was but anyway but um, you're not gonna grab the chainsaw i think i got it oh now i got it <laughs> you know i don't find myself using the chainsaw very often you know mm -hmm. i i've like as i'm as we're doing this like that space pirate mod is is showing up on my channel and i really like how that mod handled melee like the chainsaw is definitely an iconic weapon and it's in some cases a very useful weapon but in a lot of cases i think it's your a very, beaver you know it's not it's not as it's not as powerful as i'd like it to be i guess mm -hmm. like i would definitely take a berserk pack over a chainsaw like hands down easily uh, i Is think it? i would like a berserk chainsaw i mean I'm, I, I'm sure a mod like that exists somewhere oh it, it definitely it does it definitely yeah. does and uh in legend doom there are special effects for weapons that have them go where they do extra damage during berserk I think for you're all right. weapons, I I, I I I know there was some specialty chain gun or chainsaws for sure. So I, I don't know. If We're I missing three up. enemies. We are. Are we going to try to 100% this if we can? Um, no, but 
I we don't have to, but we can check where they are since yeah, it's just I, three guys. I guarantee you they're in the maze. Like that's that's where I always miss people is in the maze on the this map. Fucking maze. Yeah. Actually, maze one time huge. I missed uh, the imp in here, in the first room. Oh, I hear one. You do? Where are you? There they are. Oh, all three of them are right here. There you go. Nice, nice. <laughs> I didn't... Oh, and this, yeah, that little alley there. Yes. Yeah, that little alley there, which, I mean, I never really explore this maze very often. I mean, besides, I guess there is that secret there. Oh, I, I always know this is the maze with a chainsaw in it, but other yeah. than that. Um, yeah, so you got into Doom rather early on. Oh, yeah. Like, I yeah. mean, it was, yeah, it was it was still the shareware craze at the time, and, you know, I kind of got in on the ground floor, so um, to speak, I guess. My... Yeah, when did you start getting into Doom? Well... My history, I'm going to go with my history of id games, because it very much ties together. Uh, yeah. My history of id games, I, w I was seven years old when Quake 4 came out. Yeah. And my mom got... We aged you a bit as well. We, we yeah. have now officially aged each other. <laughs> yes. Um, and Quake 4 came out in like, 05. Yes. Right around the time when we got a 360. And my mom and I were in Future Shop, which if you don't know what Future Shop is, it's it, it's a former subsidiary of Best Buy. Okay. They, they've recently, they've since gone out of business. And imagine Best Buy, but they're all on commission. Okay. Um, and we were passing the game's aisle. And there was Quake 4 right there, and my mom was like, oh... Quake 4. I, I played Quake 2 in college. Hmm. And I'm like, oh, cool. And she bought the game. She played it for a while. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then one afternoon when she wasn't there, I uh, put the game into the Xbox 360 and played it myself. <laughs> like, while well, she, she... I mean, was she the like, kind of mom that maybe didn't want you to play it, would you say? or did um, She, she was it? okay with me watching her play it. She just didn't want me to play it. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay. Quake 4, it, it, just because that way she can curate the experience, so to speak. Yes, yes. Because totally. Quake 4 is one of the most gory games of all time. There, There is a certain scene that I still... That this is probably the main thing I remember from Quake 4, is that scene where you become strogified. Like, that's one of the probably most famous scenes in the whole... Yeah, whole like thing. stabbing you in the gut with yeah. needles I mean, full of steroids, totally chopping yeah. your fucking legs off with a rusty buzzsaw. Not something you'd want to show a seven-year-old. Probably not. I would say. Also, that came on the... Uh... It's an almost not safe for life scene. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, certainly there are worse things, but I mean, like, you know, it, it certainly is a very memorable Also, experience. in a few levels following, when you're in the waste area, there's freaking uh, blood and guts all over the fucking ceiling because they just threw out all the failed experiments. I haven't, I haven't seen, you know, I, I really do need to sit down and replay Quake 4. It's been ages. I think I, I got through maybe half of the game when that actually came out and didn't didn't sit down and finish it for whatever reason. I've but. actually, uh, my thing with Quake 4 is, due to nostalgia reasons, oh, I crap. can get to the boss. Oh, are you down there? I, I've yeah. never, I don't think I have actually ever fallen down <laughs> that side of that room. Like, I've always, like, fallen into the pit. Yeah. Thankfully, um, we're doing a mode where we don't lose anything besides just having to respawn. But, I mean, that, and that's yeah. fine. But, but, yeah, so with Quake 4, first. I kind of have a nostalgia with it where I can get to the final boss fight, but I will never let myself complete it. Oh, really? Just for emotional reasons. And uh, Quake oh. 4 on the 360 came with a bonus disc. And, it, and the bonus disc on it had some making of videos... Mostly starring Tim Willits. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Tim Willits kind of made the idea of game design an accessible concept to me. And for that reason, he will forever be my hero. So this 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 uh, this little documentary kind of explained like the process of how they developed the game, and that kind of inspired you, or kind of got you into game design in general. Is that kind of what yeah, you're... sort of. Yeah. Uh, it made me want to become a, a game programmer or developer, basically. Yes. Uh, and um, also on that bonus disc was an Xbox 360 port of Quake 2. Oh, are you, oh, oh, that's right. I think you told me about that. So, like, was, and was that like the only real, real release of Quake Two on the Xbox? Yes. Um, yeah. And it, 
came with secrets for completing each unit, and you've disappeared, but I really want to wait for these power-ups to come back. Oh, I'm just, I'm clearing out the exit room, but uh, I was, I think... What, We're going the to the secret of, exit. Yeah, what's the final step of the secret exit? Don't you have to, like, go into... There's a bridge in the first room. Right, but, like, isn't there a way to open that door, or do you just walk up to it? I'm trying to... You just walk up. Oh, okay, there it is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so... I played um, Quake 4 and Quake 2, Quake 2 quite a bit when I was younger. Um, keep, like, watching that documentary when I was, like, pretty much before and after school. Almost, not every day, but many, many days when I was seven. Yeah. Um... It just, you really drilled in the idea of, like, this is what you want, this is, like, kind of, <laughs> this is your thing, this is what you want to do. Not really what, I, I didn't consider game design as a viable option for me. Okay. At I best, I could have been a playtester. Yeah. Because my dad kept drilling in, into me that the idea of being a game designer would require a lot of math. And now I know, Probably having would. done programming courses, not as much as you would think, oh, and it's pretty cool. much basic logic. Basic logic and just know-how of software, I guess. Yeah, and if you need to do any, like, massive multiplication or division, computers have a fucking calculator on it. Yeah. Well, you, you know, that, that does add up, because, like, I look, I mean... I, I was never that strong at math either. Well, I mean, well not to say that you were, but I, I, I was just to say that I'm not strong at math in general. Yeah. Um, so, but I was able to, I mean, I would never say that the mods I created were, I mean, I'm happy to hear that some people do enjoy them, but I would never say that they were brilliant pieces of work, but it was enough, I, I could figure out the program enough to get it to do generally, you know, I had some ideas and I was able to execute on them. So it's like, you know. So, it, yeah, and, that, and it was not so much knowing math, it was just like, oh, so if I tweak this number a little bit, this is stronger, and if, you know, and if I yeah. change this frame, it'll do this, and, you know, a like, lot stuff of like that. A lot of programming is more like data entry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, yeah. Which does require basic arithmetic and logic, but sure. not as much as Not like one part might. calculation, and, yeah. 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 Actually having to do stuff like that. And, yeah. And, like, dehacked was, was well, well, no, no, no. I was going to say, it's, 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 it, you can still do, I mean, if, if Batman Doom is any indication, then you can still do some crazy stuff nope. with dehacked, for sure. And like, uh, it, it's, it's, it still was a powerful enough tool. Certainly not what you can do today with, I guess it's called Decorate or Decorate. Uh, and Decorate now, like, has kind of been, called... it's still used by Z Doom, but it's mostly been replaced by Z Script. That's, yeah, I was going to say, that now there's a thing called Zscript, which, isn't that a relatively new thing? Yeah, very new with uh, 3.0 GZ Doom. Gotcha. So, so uh, I mean, I, I, you as a pro, oh, somebody who has more experience with this than I do, what is, like, the key difference with Zscript versus Decorate? I have no fucking idea. I've, I've never I've used never. either. <laughs> but, well, because I was just curious about that, because I've been, I've been reading, you know, I, I follow a lot of people who make mods or, or just do various Doom doom tweaking and whatnot and so they, they, a lot of them are really excited about z script and so I'm like well that's great i mean it sounds like it's a really good tool and you know what it, i hope to see some really cool stuff come out of it but i'm just no no yeah, I yeah, have yeah no okay. clue what it it sounds like what it does it, it, it acts separately from the game enough that you can program stuff without altering doom significantly but i thought that's how decorate worked but i guess not but i don't know um but, yeah i i don't really know yeah, because um, my understanding of Deckard is like you can, I mean, just like I've seen in various mods, you can just add monsters and like add actors basically into the game that don't replace, because dehack replaces things. Like, in order to do something with dehack, you have to change the game. Like, you have to actually replace and modify something that already exists. But with while Deckard, it seems like you can actually, you know, add stuff, like brand it, new on top of the game itself. So. It can be a replacement thing, but it's purely additive. Yes. And it seems like Zscript is like that as well, but... Yeah. You know, except maybe just even more so. I don't know. <laughs> yes. So, following Quake 2... Yes. Um, my mom found uh, Wolf 09. Wolf, oh, right, right. That one that was just called Wolfenstein. Yeah, the only Wolfenstein game that was just called Wolfenstein. That's another thing I need to catch up on is all the Wolfenstein games. But continue. Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna happen. That's... A lot. Yeah. I guarantee it. 
So this is this is a really cool. I just want to point out real quick. This is a really cool mechanic. Like because this is you know obviously back in the day you, you could not jump. So this was really the only way you could jump is by just sheer speed and just running across just like you're doing now. And by playing on the build engine. <laughs> and by playing on the build engine, yes. Ken yeah, Silver. I just thought this was a cool like mechanic of just height difference and just all you're doing is just using physics and gravity of the engine of just you know and just propelling yourself across yeah it's an interesting mechanic and um so i played that for a while and then what around 2010 ish 2011 ish we were walking in an eb games and mom was like here look at this thing uh it looks like a sequel to something i played in college as well, and I, and I look at it, and it's a fellow in jeans and a blonde flat top. Is that, uh, are you talking about Duke Nukem there? Forever. Forever, oh man. So that was my first experience with Duke Nukem. Oh no. <laughs> that was your, oh god. That's terrible. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. horrible. Yeah. I couldn't finish that game. Like I, I just I just flat out dropped it. I really, really wanted to like it. I really did, but it just wasn't happening. And it like I mean I don't I don't I don't even blame Gearbox for that. I mean that, that game honestly probably should have just been left for dead. Like it, it shouldn't not like it shouldn't have been the game left for dead. It should have just been left for dead. It yeah. should have been like left alone and just you know I think I stopped playing sometime around when it zoomed out from the TV screen, and Duke Nukem was holding controller while two ladies get off of their <laughs> knees and go, But what about the game, Duke? <laughs> well, after 14 fucking years, it better be good. <laughs> well, it wasn't, Duke. I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry, Duke. I've heard that the add-ons the ex the add -ons were pretty alright, if you were able Never to get through that actually you know i will say this though um i actually had a decent enough time playing multiplayer for the short-lived time people were actually playing it maybe people still do play it i don't know i haven't checked in a long time maybe but. it's something like die katana where oh i usually go up there last man oh well i like to live dangerously i guess <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it's it's only that line that raises that lift is a w1 line w1 line does that mean it, like once it's up you just you can't do anything about it or? walk once activate walk once activate okay but wr it'll, it'll, it'll... is walk repeatable activate oh, wow so yeah you just can't once you just can't get back up there once you're up there that's it yeah if you come down you're not going back interesting yeah is that used often like i i, I don't think about that too much um like, a w once and switch once are used a lot um, then there's also a door once. Well, so, in the Switch version, I can imagine, could be, like, you could open a door permanently and never have it go down, right? Like, or you can have a door open, wait, close, and then never be able to open again. Ah. Which See, is awesome. Josh, Josh, as you guys probably know, makes maps and has invest investigated this sort of stuff. I... That, that's another part I guess I should clarify like aside from just experimenting with with modding sometimes like I'm I'm mostly okay. just a person who plays these games and this is a fan of them but I, I I don't know aside from just experience like a lot of the technical aspects of doom just like what you described like I don't know I don't know nearly enough about mapping to like know that kind of stuff about like how how the game can be programmed in such a way like that now like like this like you cross the set I know that there's a thing called sectors like I know that there is like you know, there are sectors, and that's how you build maps and things like that. I, I know. Switch once. <laughs> that's so. This is a switch once. Okay, gotcha. Yes. Is there? There's a way out of here, though. Yeah, over here. The switch yeah. repeatable. Okay. So. But yeah, but yeah. Like I, I only know the very basics of Doom enough that like, like what basically stuff that you learn from gameplay. But like, I've never really looked into the finer mechanics of like how the how the engine and how mapping works. I've just mostly looked into like. The gameplay of like how do monsters work and what can you do with what can you do to them you know and that's what like cube and all those experiments of the act are really all about just like experimenting with what the characters do rather than what the map speaking are. of what the monsters can do i'm going to give you a chance to guess what the monsters in wolfenstein and quake can do that the monsters in doom cannot do just <laughs> vanilla interesting okay uh 
So it's something that, that is shared between Quake and Wolfenstein that is not shared in Doom? Yes. Interesting. I'm not sure um, if it's the, the, it's the same code, but it's the same effect. Wow, or, or the same result. So, I know that all the monsters... Well, actually, I know Doom and, and Wolfenstein monsters can open doors. I, I don't remember, honestly, if they can in Quake. If I don't know either, but that's not what I'm thinking of. Okay. Um, what else? Let's see. So... Mon all the monsters throughout well no and wolfenstein monsters don't really make a sound unless they unless they see you for the first time um so it's not that it's no no, no enemy except for a misfits mod that i've experienced uh can pick up items mm -hmm. um man what would it be well in wolfenstein enemies don't fight each other but in doom and quake they can so it's not that um yeah no it's not in fighting I'll give you one more guess. Okay. Uh, my only other guess would be... Um, man. I'm trying to think. Cause like There are so many similarities between those three games. And again, obviously, because they're built by the same people. So they have a lot of design philosophy being shared there. But... Um, I don't know. I don't. I can't think of anything else. I'll, I'll try, I'll, let me see if I can think of one more thing. Oh, also, let's go in this room real quick. Just to... Oh, yeah, yeah. The, Just uh, for the sake of killing these. This is like the quasi... Update uh, 1.666. So one that's the hint that you're giving me? No, 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 no. This is to do with this floor here. Oh. So in update one before update 1.666, it actually did look like a swastika. Ah. But from so... what I heard, Romero apparently... This is probably incorrect, but apparently Romero got a letter from a veteran. Ah, and so he changed it. Despite that he had just finished making a game that is entirely about killing Nazis and that there's Nazi symbols everywhere in that game. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, people are people. Yeah, and... Well, I'm not, I, not, to say, not to say that swastikas aren't offensive. I'm just saying, like, it's kind of like a strange thing to point out in Doom when there's when their previous <laughs> game was all about Nazis. But anyway, it's um, kind of an interesting thing there. But Okay, we're, I'm not really supposed to be paying attention to chat but someone we kind of you mentioned just a few seconds ago says uh in the fair's rain enemies can also pick up shit yes exactly that was precisely what i was mentioning and i i am almost positive that you're referring to misfit yes so. <laughs> it's inspired by a few wolfenstein mods apparently oh well there you go well, I mean, um, as far as like the similarity that you were just asking about, I actually, I, I, I have no idea. I, I don't think I know what, 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 what Quake and routes. Doom do that Wolfenstein or what Wolfenstein and Quake do that Doom doesn't. I don't know. You can in Wolf and Quakenstein, er, you know, Quake and Quake and Stein, Stein. <laughs> that now needs, that to, needs be to be a thing. thing. <laughs> yeah, how is that not a thing already? Like I Quake know. <laughs> Holy shit! Um, well, that's please, generations. Some, some, somebody right please now. needs or to no. make that like. Now is Quakenstein is Quakenstein like Wolfenstein and Quake or is it or is it Quake and Wolfenstein? Like, well, how what? would you do Quake and Wolfenstein? <laughs> I mean, you'd have to like just I, I mean, it's the same way people do like Half-Life and Doom where they just take screenshots of the models and make them into sprites, which looks terrible, but I mean, you know, yeah. it's something, I guess, but it's yeah. like in Mass Mouth. Have you ever seen Mass Mouth how they handle uh how they handle that sort of situation? that's what I'm picturing. I would much rather see Wolfenstein and Quake to be quite uh, Frank, I'd rather see like the 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 classic like Quake polygon count of Wolfenstein enemies, and then Wolfenstein weapons and whatnot in Quake. Well, I'd you've seen it see in that. Quake too. Uh, well, yes, I guess you know technically with with generations, there there is a certain amount Which, of that. And I, I guess I, actually, you know, also my my playthrough of generations, I kind of sort of did that. Yeah. to a certain extent but i want to see the reversal where you're like maybe the quake guy fighting nazis that would be interesting um anyway well, we went way off off track yes, here you were so going to tell me enemies thing yes so yes. in wolfenstein and quake you can set your enemies the enemies when you're placing them down to go on a special route to walk around oh you can't oh you can actually oh you can have them patrol that's right oh shit yeah, yeah yes yeah. i totally yeah. knew right oh i didn't think about that but yes i know exactly what you're talking about i'm gonna yeah. let you open doors you know okay. <laughs> i think that might be the solution to this um, is that no no it's fine it's fine what we can just go as 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 it as it needs to be like it doesn't really matter 
Um, so yeah. I was gonna say yeah. they could have maybe programmed it so that once one of the players opens a door, the other player can't shut it. But I could also see some reasons why you wouldn't want to do that. But or like, like, what if a friend like opens a door and like the other guy's like, "Wait, no, close it. We don't want to wake those guys up yet." Or I don't know. It's yeah. from yeah. So this level, from what I've heard, it's a really good deathmatch level. Uh, yeah, yeah, I could see that. I don't know if I ever actually played deathmatch here. Um, in in Doom. I played a lot of Deathmatch in Episode 3. I remember that distinctly. Um, specifically, E3 Episode 2. I actually played a lot of Deathmatch there, because it's like a... It's like a it's a oh, level the hand where, with the uh, boomerang. Yes, the hand, exactly. There's that a lot is of, one like, of my favorite levels in Doom. And there's a lot of cover in that map, you know? Like, there's a lot of areas where you duck around a corner and suddenly you're presented with a player, and so, like, there's a lot of frantic sort of play of, like, you mm -hmm. round a corner, like, oh, shit, and you start shooting each other, and, like, it's just... It becomes like a really, uh, like, just again, hectic experience. Uh -huh. but... Well, this level has something very important for deathmatch. Oh, what's that? This. This teleporter? Because then I can oh, back oh, up and shoot to, you. Oh, <laughs> be able to like back up and then shoot somebody. Okay. I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, that's very good for deathmatch. And plus, over there with the uh, bridge, that's also very good for like you flying around and shit. Like, I think I also would play Deathmatch on, like, you know, the, the boss levels. Like, the Cyber Demons level and Spyro Demons level were really good for Deathmatch. I remember that much. That, where at least they were a lot of fun for that. With more than four people, I can imagine that becoming shit Deathmatch. Yeah. But for, like, up to 1v4, that's perfect. Or 1v3, I mean. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's kind of crazy to think, like, this game only had up to four players uh, when it first came out. For you know? co-op, like, yeah, but... Yeah, and it wasn't until Quake where we started getting... I think Quake had up to 16? I'm trying to remember. Well, with Dwango, you could do uh, 32 players at once. Well, that's right, and, but Dwango wasn't until Doom 2, right? Or, I'm trying to remember. Um, Yes, I think so. I think some people just approached uh, Romero at a conference and were like, Here, run this. Oh, some, and... somebody else made Dwango and gave it to id? Yeah, like, just some fans, and like, here run this <laughs> that's actually pretty cool I, yeah. I i remember doom 2 being packaged with duango and i remember ultimate doom which is what we're playing essentially also yes. came packaged with duango um but yeah I, I, that that's something else like so back in the day like i, I distinctly remember playing quake 2 on and blood on a little program called uh m player like mm -hmm. right around the late 90s when things like game spy and, and other things like that started coming around and so, like, that was my first real... I mean, I used to do dial-up and everything. I played Duke Nukem dial-up. Like, me and two other people would, like, connect to each other. Like, one person would host and the other two would join. And there was a whole, like, dial-tone process where you actually had to call the damn thing. And, and, if, and, if, and if, if somebody called your parents, then you'd get kicked out of the server. It's like, damn it, I was on, like, a killing spree. Or I had, somebody like, a high score. Your, like, if somebody called your parents? If somebody called the house. like if Because, like, it was all phone lines, you know? So, like, if somebody called the house... Oh, I thought you meant, house, like, if someone... It, it was, like, some kind of cheaty game oh, no. they allowed. Like, if someone went in and called your number, they were allowed to ban you. Well, I mean... <laughs> People could troll you by calling your number and uh, yeah, I totally basically forgot kicking about... you off. But like, yeah, yeah, it, it was crazy though. Cause yeah, like so like you're, <laughs> we would get kicked off of our gaming sessions because somebody was calling our, our our house line and like stuff like that. Like that that was the so that's why we tried to like limit our gaming at like at night when people wouldn't call and when our parents were asleep and all that. So I don't know. It was just or yeah. if on the weekends it was tough too, just because people would call during the day and like. You know, not even, you know, just for random shit, but that would knock us off the internet. Yeah, like, I I was quite young when I started using the internet, and I, I've i maybe been using the internet since I was three and been using broadband since I was five. Oh, yeah. yeah, so, like, by the time you were five, like, broadband was a thing, and, yeah, like... Yeah. I mean, I, I first started getting, like, that kind of connection probably... Oh, like, 2000s. I mean, like, probably... 2002 I, i'm trying i mean i don't know i don't that, yeah, that, that might not be right but I, I remember like i remember by the time i had half-life 2 i was definitely doing like broadband and you know stuff like that and but by then of course like there was w a lot more like server-based deathmatch and like stuff like that where it wasn't like it wasn't dial up anymore it wasn't even in player anymore it's like half-life just came with a oh we don't have the l key yet it just oh, came right. with like a, a server <laughs> browser you know yeah and oh um, it's all back here that's right 
Um, so, but yeah, I mean, it was crazy though. I, I have these distinct memories of like that, like that was like the early days of voice chat. Like what we're doing now is a far more advanced thing of like going into M player and just by being in a lobby, you could chat to people and like, you know, that was still a thing back then. That, that what you just found a secret I didn't even know existed, by the way. Re oh, I have. I never knew about this. Wow. I have every. Like, I have all of episode one and two memorized completely. <laughs> You're secrets. just. You have an encyclopedic knowledge of this game. Which yes. is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't even have that. Like, I'm no Fraggle, but I know a shit ton. I mean, that's nuts. I, I, I literally I'm, did not know about this secret. Like, I, I, just, I have never thought to go up to this wall and be like, I'm going to press that. Yeah. Are you aware of who Fraggle is? I, that, that name is very familiar, but I don't know um, if I know exactly. He made the source port smack my marine up. Oh my god. And he also, that also sounds familiar. And he also made Fraggle script. Which is... Huh. Yeah. I've now actually, this secret I do know about, but yeah, yeah that's crazy. I, did, I didn't know that. Um, I actually was not aware of that source port. And the guy who wrote, who was writing the first script to the Doom movie, asked him for input on a line or so. Huh. Well, uh, the scene never got in in the movie, and I think his script was thrown out. But uh, it was some guy regaling a deathmatch story in the scene, and yeah. Fraggle almost got his name, his username into the um, the actual script. Yeah. yeah so he that knows a fair bit about Doom. Oh yes, I would imagine so. Um, I actually got him, I'm the reason why his, um, shit, I've, I'm, I'm actually the reason why his current rank on the Doom World forums is the Kevin Bacon of Doom. Oh, really? Um, basically, I was pl hanging out on the Doom wiki for a while, and I noticed so often so many phrases, so many pages were one to seven, one to six links away from his page <laughs> because of Fraggle's script and yeah the, uh, the six up. degrees of, of kevin bacon separation yeah so that's called yeah so i was talking to him in uh jp lebreton's discord about it and he's he, he was amused by it uh to say the very least he was amused and nice. so i put it up on the uh so i put the game up on a, a post on the forums and someone was like, if Linguica doesn't change his rank on the forums to uh, to the Kevin Bacon of Doom, if he does that, he will be my favorite moderator ever. We should talk about Doom World for a bit, because I have been I, I have been around that. That was like one of the, speaking of modding and when I started getting into that, I mean, that Doom World was definitely a huge... You pretty much grew resource. up on Doom World. On oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I made my account in... It's still up. I still have an account there to this day, and it, it was it was created in uh, December 2000. Well, c conversely, my account was made in February, I think. Just February so I, of this year? Or? Yeah. No, no, January this year. Sorry, January, oh, January this, year. this year. Because I wanted to thank uh, Memphis for his review of JNN Hangar. Oh, right. He did the sweetest review of... of I don't, yeah, he's I don't, like, this has to be the most... I think he said, like, this has to be the most passionate... Text file uh, in... File I have ever read for a while. It's like, yeah, I'd say that. That sounds about right, man. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you went all out on that thank you section. It's, it's really heartfelt. It's really nice. And I did the same thing within the mess of it as well. Which um, I'm trying to remember if I read the in the mess of it one. You know, I don't know which, if I did, to be honest. I, I definitely read the J.A., uh, but, the, like... Yeah. Which, by yeah. the way, you guys, uh, In the Mess of It is episode one of my Mole Doom project, named after this fellow right here. Mole Doom project. He is Mole Doom guy. And I... I you told me once what the, uh, what the second episode was going to be called, but I actually forgot about it. But that's okay, because it could probably be a surprise once I actually play it. I've... But, uh, if, you, if you want it to be a surprise, that's fine, but I can tell you again. Sure, actually, go ahead. <laughs> um, it's called uh, A Snowball's Chance. That's right, that's right. I remember that now. Which, I really like the name. It kind of goes in the punny nature. Yes. No, I mean, I'm always a fan of puns, so I, that is perfectly fine with me. And then instead of uh, Inferno, because I like to think, while Doom Guy likes to be comedically poetic, uh... Mole Doom guy is just a casual guy. He'll he'll call it. He'll give it a name like the Pit. 
Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Right. Um, oh man, I am I am been running low on health this whole time. I actually got through that last room with the uh, in that exit we just got to, like in the mm. previous level. That that room where I was fighting all the pinkies and zombies, I had like seven health that whole time. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't die. That was I've... completely by accident. But <laughs> so getting back to how I got into Doom, because we haven't even right. mentioned Doom yet. Um. Yes. I I have been aware of Doom for a long time. Like. As it's a very famous game. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I was informed of DOSBox at one point, and I could play, uh, yes. uh I, I, I downloaded DOSBox not to play Doom, but actually to play Wolfenstein. Ah. Uh, illegally, of course. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> I mean, does, is Wolfenstein offered on Steam? Steam and GOG, yes. Oh, and GOG, okay. I yeah. did later buy Wolfenstein on Steam, by the way. Yeah. And so I played a few levels of that, and it was really fun. And then I also, maybe the same year or maybe a year later, I did the same thing for Doom. Nothing really came from that. No fandom there. Yeah. Um, and then two years ago, I on a whim, I decided to buy uh, Wolfenstein on Steam. And yeah. I, I really got into it. I uh, No, actually... On Bethesda's website for Wolfenstein, there is a, an HTML5 version of Wolfenstein. I got into that one. Oh, it, oh, really? Like they actually like flash coded it or like kind of coded it? HTML5. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. As opposed to right. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So I I got into the HTML5 version of Wolfenstein. I may I was able to beat the first episode using uh, keyboard controls. Nice. That's like the classic way to play it. Yeah, game. and I was at the same time <clears throat> I was listening to a special Bethesda podcast where they got John Carmack on just to talk about how they were making how they made Wolfenstein back in the day, and it it's and it, he mentioned he he made a joke that uh, Romero he he mentioned a joke that Romero made that is probably my favorite joke in gaming history. Not really, but it's 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 a really good joke, and so. The joke is when it, it actually happened apparently when Carmack was porting uh, Wolfen or Wolfenstein to like the Jaguar and the 3DO in the mid 90s, he he had to play the game. Yeah. And he was playing the game, and he says to Car he says to Romero, "Hey, this is really fun." And Carmack says, well, "It was fun in the early 90s too when we made it." <laughs> <laughs> Because they were just love being smug and sarcastic sometimes. Of course. As you would when you've made one of the most popular games of all time and followed yeah. it up with this with the second most popular game of all time. Yeah. I mean... <clears throat> the third most popular game of all time... Nope. Followed by the second most popular game of all time. What is the most popular? Well, Mario, I suppose? Or Pong? Or Tetris? Um, I don't know. Knowing Soccer Moms, it probably is Tetris, though. Probably is. I mean, I know Tetris is up there somewhere. Yeah. Oh, I know... forgot about the secret out here. I don't remember how to get to it. I do. Like, with, with the, with the uh, of course you do. But like with all the, uh, yeah, with all these guys. Yeah. Is it? Is it involved being? Wait, where'd you go? Over here. Hold on. Where? Oh, there you are. Okay. Come on. Show me. Yeah, I'm trying to remember how to get to the secret. So, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that, you, you, you played Wolfenstein uh, on a website. That was your experience on the Bethesda Wolfenstein. website. Yeah. And then right. I bought Wolfenstein and Spear of Destiny and the mission right. packs off of Steam. <laughs> I fucking love the game more than anything. Right. Yeah. And I, I learned about Easy Wolf after that. And right. I'm like, all right, fuck it. I need to I need to play the spiritual successor. So I got Doom and learned about source ports right away, but my source port wasn't Zandronum, of course. Or it wasn't Z-Doom, it was Zandronum. Oh, okay. Zandronum was my first source port, and anyone think... who watched my stream in 2016 would know this. Cause I think Zandronum... Legacy was mine, was my first. Aw, <laughs> uh, Legacy, man. The fucking lighting in that, you can use that in Z-Doom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There Legacy... are some things I miss from Legacy, um... Well, certain old mods play a lot better on Legacy than they do on other stuff. 
Um, like, I, actually, I think a lot of the Wolf and Doom mods were actually more designed for Legacy. I don't know this for verbatim, but I mean, this is what I, I thought I understood. Oh no! Oh, okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think I know for sure. Like Rheingold, um, which is unfinished. Which is unfinished, but if you oh god, I forgot about the specters. If you if you actually play Rheingold on Legacy and you walk into that like that restaurant area, mm -hmm. the uh, the radio will actually play properly because if you, if you watch my playthrough of it at least, um, the radio is kind of messed up. Oh, and wow. there's a lot of ambient sounds in Wolf and Doom that kind of get messed up. Uh, Which I figured out how they do ambient sounds. Yeah, um, there's there must be a specific way to do that because like yeah. Um, um, so what I found when I was no clipping around, and I probably showed you this at one point. I was yeah no, yeah. There's the monsters. Uh, yeah, Doom Two monsters that they didn't need to use were given new sound effects. Right. And it's something about like I think it's. I, I don't remember. Somebody actually wrote in my comments once, like precisely how it's done, because mm -hmm. like it's something about like they change the frames and dehack so that like a single frame is like repeating itself over and over again. It might even be like the sight frame that's repeating itself over and over again to the point where the sound repeats itself, but not like over and over. It's more just like I don't know. It's able. It's it's able to create a loop, which is kind of crazy. And like, yeah. <laughs> you're good at this. <laughs> well, I've been dodging rockets for a long time. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I always I always thought that was a really cool mechanic. Okay, so we're starting back at here. Um, so yeah, what we gotta do is... Uh, I mean, can, we could just start the next episode. Okay? We gotta call a vote, somehow. Do you know how to oh, do that? okay. I don't know how to answer a vote. Hold on, let me look at my controls. <laughs> it's been a minute. Uh, vote yes. Okay, no, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So, go ahead and cast your vote. Um, um so it should be to change map E1, E2, M1? Yes. How do I do go that? Go ahead and do it. Oh, yeah, um, options. I gotta check my controls here. Yeah, because my, m voting yes for me is page up. I think that's the default. Call vote. Where the fuck is it? Should be, uh, controls. It's right under, um, the inventory. Inventory, inventory. And then voting should be vote yes, vote no. Inventory, inventory. Where the fuck is inventory? Inventory is underneath the weapon slots. Oh, under and the weapons weapon. is underneath chat. And chat is underneath movement. Controls, I guess. Um, inventory. Yeah, under that. Or, is... or if you scroll down to the very, very bottom of the controls, you should see the voting section. Oh, it should be like right in front of you. Possibly. Possibly. Strike, you know, pop-up screens, other... And then Chase. voting should be... Voting is just, it shows vote yes and vote no. I don't know how to... Yes. Oh, oh, you're looking for how to set up a vote. Yeah. Okay, that I don't know. Um, hold on. I have I have a second monitor here. Let me check. Multiplayer options. Syndronum call vote. Oh, there. I found it. Oh, there call you go. vote. Change the map. Yeah, yeah, it's call vote is the commands, right? The game is space, that's correct. Taunt is you. Can I do taunts? <laughs> I forgot about that. I completely forgot that was in Xandrotum. <laughs> reason playthrough. <laughs> I yeah. guess that's a good enough reason to vote. Um, so our health will be like 8%. Really? Oh, because... Oh, well, you're 96. No, mine's 8%. That's really? my ammo. Oh, that's your ammo. Right, right. My health is... Okay, right. I'm now remembering how to read this. I think that's fair because we're not pistol starting this episode. Now, I actually never saw this episode until I got Ultimate Doom. I, um... Which was way Me later. Neither. Like Me neither. I, I, I played Doom 2 before I ever saw the, the additional episodes of Doom 1. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, the first time I ever saw this must have been like '95 or somewhere around there. Yeah. So, so speaking of other Doom Engine games, mm -hmm. just for shits and giggles, I actually never. So I, I remember playing Heretic as a shareware game from Ultimate Doom because it actually came packaged as a shareware game with Ultimate Doom when you bought the disc. Oh, that's and then rad. Hexen, yeah, like you, yeah, like I, I well, and I you had to go shareware Doom. For it. I know shareware Doom came with uh, shareware Heretic. Really? Or shareware Wolfen, no oh, shareware, shareware Doom Wolfenstein. Yes, came yeah. with uh, full retail Wolfenstein. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, 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 I think that's probably how my family got its hands on Doom shareware because, like, we had the disc shareware, and a lot of people I think back then were actually sharing through the internet, like the the old version of the internet. 
BBS um, systems and IRC and yeah, like, all that stuff. But like we, I, yeah, actually, I think that's how that happened because like we probably bought Wolfenstein as a as a retail copy, and it probably came with the shareware of Doom. That's probably how I got my hands on Doom in the first place. I still use IRC from time to time. I don't think I ever did. My my, my old days of, of internet communities was like AOL and stuff like that. Oh yeah, John Carmack uh, doesn't use doesn't go on IRC either. Mm. That's actually uh, if you go to the Doom Wiki article on IRC, there's just a there's a one of the tr one on there is just a, like you can see quotes about IRC, and one of the quotes is, the only quote is from John Carmack that says I don't go on IRC. The very first Caco Demon ever. Yeah, well, actually, not quite. Come here. Oh, really? Yeah. So if you go this way, hold on, let me teleport back. Um, yeah, so if, so, yeah, over in the first, so right here, you see this thing, the, mm -hmm. the switch, there's a switch on the front side, switch on the back side, one switch right, opens right. here, another switch opens a teleporter up there, which you can get oh. to before the other Caco Demon, and there's a Caco Demon in there. Really? Wait, I actually, wait, I didn't know about this, hold on. Oh, yeah. This game has been around for 25 years, and I didn't know about this? There's a plasma Oh my rifle. god! Holy crap, I have never seen this room before! <laughs> There's a plasma wow. rifle in the corner. That's unbelievable. Like yeah. again, it's it's crazy how I've played this game for so long, and I mean there are so many secrets I have yeah. like I don't know about. Oh, and there's a plasma gun in here. I said that there's a plasma rifle in the corner. I didn't hear you say that, but yeah. oh my god, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> that's nuts. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, if, well I I just learned something new about this game. Holy shit. Um, that's, if we get all nuts. the secrets in the first two episodes, you're probably gonna learn something. Yeah, probably so. I need some help. Uh, what were we talking? Oh, was, Sorry, yeah, right yeah. so so yeah. so so Ultimate Doom had a shareware copy of, of 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 Heretic in it, and but you had to go looking for it. Like I, I was just I popped in the CD into my drive, and I was just kind of exploring what was on the disc, and I was like, oh, there's this folder called Heretic, and I was like, what the hell is this? And so lo and behold, we installed it, uh, and yeah, it was Heretic shareware, and I was like, wow, this is like a, a fantasy version of Doom. It's so your cool. mind must have been blown to find another game hidden within a game. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was not like unheard of to, to, that because we had a lot of discs that had like variety packs of, of games and such, such. So like, I was kind of used to that aspect of it, but but I certainly was not expecting to find a, a fantasy version of Doom on this Doom disc. Oh, yeah. And that's how I learned about Ravensoft. Like that was I didn't had no idea who they were until that happened. Uh, but we never ended up buying Heretic. I guess at the time, and I think this is one of Heretic's downsides. I mean, I think Heretic's a wonderful game. But it's amazing. I, also, I, I love it's, it. It's a maybe great game. As much as Doom. In, in retrospect, it's a wonderful game. But I think at the time when I, I mean, I felt this way too. Like my brother and I played Heretic, and like this is cool, but it's pretty much just Doom with a different. Our interpretation, by the was that it was just Doom with a different skin. And so we weren't that compelled to go buy it, like because we felt like, well, I mean, you know, and, and by that point we were also playing other games like like Quake and and yeah. and, and Duke Nukem, which all had their own unique flair of, of first person. And not to say Heretic didn't, but like I don't know, Heretic was so similar to Doom to us that we were just kind of like, eh, you know, well, Heretic, this, this is cool, but we didn't we weren't that invested, you know. Heretic's but, great side was not like being different from Doom or blah blah blah. It was its great side was the level design was was just so different and it, yeah that, like it that's, a, lot, a lot more realistic for sure like i, I felt like at least. like levels resembled what they were called right exactly like does this resemble a containment area no it does not no <laughs> it although now that i've played hellbound i can really appreciate the kind of like what's going on here because like what you see this is like a uac area and yeah. but in here is clearly a demonic presence and yeah, like which... that, that became way more clear when I played Hellbound. Like the kind of that's what I really like about Hellbound is that they really tried to like flesh out like the designs of this of this game. And like, it's like I, I never really stopped to think that like, okay, this is a UAC facility, but there's clearly areas that are that are demonic. And like, I don't know, I, I never really stopped to really think about that. Until, I considered it until like now. the uh, anomaly, what the Demos and Phobos anomalies were slowly converting the uh, UAC architecture into hellish architecture. Yeah, the hellish architecture, exactly. So, like, slowly these cement walls here with the tech on them were slowly being converted to marble. Yeah. Which, Which by is the really way, interesting. It's like, why why did the demons want to make things, like, kind of... Like, they're, they're just, like, they're, they're redecorating, basically. It's like, what are they, uh... 
I mean, I, I think other games have handled it well. Like other Doom games, were like clearly there's well, even in Hellbound, I keep promoting Hellbound. I'm promise I'm not trying to promote Hellbound. I'm just, it's just it's just um, fresh in my mind, yeah. you know. But like you know, like there, there's these areas where there's corruption, like that you can see like in the walls. Like it's clearly like there's an infestation going on, like a demonic infest. Not just with the demons everywhere, but also like the walls are being like corrupted and changed and like. Oh yeah, I forgot. I know about this secret here. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I don't know how many secrets you know in this level. I just I remember this one distinctly because like I always just thought like, what's the point of these little these little things back here? And so just by exploring them, that's kind of where I figured out that yeah. stuff. But there is a secret that I probably should show you. I don't know if you know it. Uh, I don't know. Come back to me. Let me find where you are. I'm near the, uh, the square pillar. Oh, you're right. by the plasma rifle. Oh, I am. Well, here. Oh, now. Wait, hold on. I think we're going in circles now. <laughs> hold on. Yeah, right, I'm yeah. now I'm, I'm by the plasma rifle. I'm coming back around to you. No, I'm over by the plasma rifle now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is so. This is the first time you. I mean, unless you find that earlier secret. Yeah, find this is the, the first rifle. time you see it w without yes. having to go into a secret. Yeah. yeah. So right. if we go this way, I don't know if you've seen this chain of secrets over here. Because it appears you haven't seen all the secrets. No, I definitely have not. Oh, backpack, okay. Are you aware of this secret? Uh, I don't think I saw this one before, no. Oh, this? Uh -huh. Wow. No, I don't think I've seen this. Yeah? There's another one behind you, I'm assuming, yeah. Yeah. There's one right here. Oh, wow. Oh, that's what the, okay, computer map there. Okay. And then it goes out to here. Interesting. Yeah. I don't think I knew about that very much. Do we have the yellow key? Nope, no. we don't. <laughs> All right, I'll go grab that. I like right. this little puzzle. It's it's a pseudo puzzle. Like you can easily yeah. figure it out. I it but it is it, a puzzle, it's a very classical it's... puzzle. Like yeah. like I don't know. It reminds me of like Zelda stuff where like you would you would have to like find your way across an invisible bridge of some kind and I don't know. There's a lot that those mechanics I saw a lot in, in the Zelda games and whatnot. But how much? Uh, I was gonna go back to uh, the Raven stuff because I was gonna say yeah, uh, the first time I played Hexen actually was on the Nintendo 64. Um, oh my and god! It, it took me a second oh, to really make guy. the connection that it was actually a sequel to Heretic. Because um, it's called. Uh, I mean, it's Hexen called Hexen, but Heretic. I never really, but I never really uh, saw that at, uh, on the N64 packaging. I might be wrong about this, but I, I, I'm pretty sure the N64 packaging just said Her uh, just said Hexen on it. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, after playing it, I was like, this is very much like a Doom game. I mean, eventually, once the internet became a little more prolific and you could actually look up stuff in an encyclopedic format, I don't remember when Wikipedia became became a thing, but, like, I know eventually I looked it up and I was like, oh, this is, like, this is made by the people who made Heretic, and this is actually a sequel of that, and yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah. I, and, like, I used to play it a lot with some of my, my old middle school friends, because, like, you know, back when N64 started becoming a thing was when people started doing local deathmatch and, like, local multiplayer because you know that was like golden eye and perfect dark were things back then and so like a lot of people were like going over to each other's houses and playing deathmatch and mm -hmm. um and so a, f a few friends of mine and i would play uh hex and multiplayer and oh. like so like i would always be the cleric and one of my friends was always the mage and the other friend was the fighter and we would just yeah just just we would go to the to the uh, vivarium and, and just kill each other on that map which is like a secret level in hexen anyway but yeah so that's but that, I think, probably because I played it so much with my friends is the reason why Hexen is one of my favorite games. I mean, also the design of Hexen. Um, I thought it was... I, I, I actually still think it's, I mean, in a way, better than Heretic, although I think Heretic has its own appeal. But, like, um, I don't know. Yeah, like, um, just techni just from a technical standpoint, Heretic, or Hexen is definitely much better. Yeah, it does just, It does a lot of new, cool stuff that Doom and the, Heretic uh, didn't class do. class system and... yeah. And all that class jazz. system and kind of the, the puzzle mechanics and just and the, and the hub system Don't and all that, that kind of way. stuff i thought was really cool whoops There's... yeah <laughs> now Actually, i see what you mean yeah if you drop into the nukage and you can hit the switch that raises the bridge from where are you uh oh, you're i am over near by the armor. Armor. You're, you're by the armor yeah so what I like to do when I'm playing uh, episode one and two all the way through, I like to make it a mission to try to finish the level with 200-200. Hmm. So over here, before you go down there, you see the button over, the switch over here? Yeah. 
So the speedrunners like to do this where you drop down in the lava and use the uh, 2.5D to hit the switch from down in the lava, and then they get on there. Oh, but, so you can, like, kind of angle it in such a way that you could actually hit it as you're coming down, like, because you get, no, you get no, close you enough to the switch. No, you can hit it down on the ground. Oh, like that. Yeah. Except now, of course, I have trapped myself. Yeah, but you'll die in a second. And yeah. also, if you just <laughs> It's try, okay, you'll die. It's you'll... fine. <laughs> yeah. Don't um, worry about it. You're going to die. Yeah. I mean, and also another thing, more. you can relatively easily SR40 from there to the exit door. Oh, I had, I had, oh, I get to keep my armor. I forgot about that. Okay. Yeah. Even though... That's actually kind of weird. I don't know how they would keep track of what your armor would be because as you die, where'd you yeah, die? Yeah, it's like I, I figured I'd be completely. This well, it's probably a multiplayer. Um, it's probably a Zandronum gameplay option you might have enabled. I don't know. It where'd might be spawn? something to do with. I well, I spawned back at, at at the at the start, but um. Oh, you you move fast. I do. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, I think it, it must be a way you set up the server where, like, it's the same reason why we don't lose our weapons or ammo. It's probably that same sort of reasoning. Motherfucker. Yes. Oh, I do not <laughs> like crushers. Um, I have never liked crushers. I do know about this secret. I do tend to enjoy crushers as a design feature. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's an it's definitely a cool idea. I made a level that was, like, not entirely, but a partial remake of this if you recall. It wasn't... Of this, of this level, yes, with the crushers, right. It wasn't this intended... was actually the, it was the level you had the secret exit on. Yeah, also. it wasn't like intended to be a remake of this level, but there's so many elements from this level that I might as well... It might as well be a remake in some sense. You're right. Um, map 3, if you are if you guys are curious, it's a map... You guys doing at home, it's map 3 of my... Um, my... Um, map set in the mess of it. Right. Which I don't it's I I'm unlike Jan and Hanger, I'm actually still proud of it after a couple months. Yeah, I still think it's a good set. Yeah. And I need to replay the Hanger one because it's been a really long time since I played that. Oh um, god. Oh god. No you don't. <laughs> no you don't. You really don't. It's awful. If... There, so, I was going to say, there's another thing that I made a long time ago, uh, for Doom 1, actually, oh, really? that has never seen the light of day, because, I don't know if I've told you about this, but it's a mod, I, it was it was really the first, uh, I call all of my mods de-hacked experiments, because that's exactly what they are, there's, there's not much more to them, um, Cube is the only one that actually got somewhere, and even then, it had that's its fair. own little ups and downs part of it, but anyway, there was, a, there was a mod, I don't even think it had a name. Um, oh, fascinating. But there was a mod I made for Doom 1. I mean, again, I, I use the word mod lightly, uh, loosely. And really all it was was me. Um, well, another, another another piece of context here before I go on. Back in the, the 90s and like uh, like the mid to late 90s, there was, all, there was this whole section of AOL, America Online, yeah. where people could upload uh, Doom mods and, and, and Doom custom doom stuff and a lot of it was levels but um some people actually uploaded uh sprite replacements so for example uh are you familiar with barney the dinosaur barney is a dinosaur with no imagination yes yes the purple dinosaur yes um, he, I, I who, was, who was all the rage back in the 90s but also oh, in the early people... 2000s as well unfortunately oh really yeah I didn't know about that. I, I knew that he was the, the big a big deal in the '90s, and especially when I when I was growing up, I used to watch him. Like I, I, as a kid, I watched Barney the Dinosaur, 100. percent Oh yeah, no. Um, well, mid to late '90s uh, American culture kind of stuck around in the early 2000s in Canada. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Well, so point being, um, at one point. Somebody uploaded a sprite replacement for the Pinky Demon that turned him into Barney the Dinosaur. Um, someone did something similar. I found when I was I'm in, in the middle of my uh, Wad archive playthrough. Someone did something similar, but with the Barons instead. Oh, I, I I remember. I think I saw that. Well, long story short, like this this little mod, quote unquote, was yeah. basically a hodgepodge of me grabbing a variety of different sprite replacements. So. 
Barney the Dinosaur was the Pinky Demon. Um, mm -hmm. Tom Servo from Mystery Science Theater was the Cyber Demon. I've, um, yeah, I've actually have yet to watch MST3K. I've, I've not watched much of it myself, but I've watched enough of it to know who Tom Servo is. He is he like the, the thing one? with the bird beak that looks like a gumball machine? That's the well. Well, so there's the bird beak thing, and then there's the gumball machine. Tom Servo is the is the gumball machine. Actually, wait a minute. No, no, no. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I think. Well, then there's the whole. There was another thing that that was in the in the mod that was like this robot from the 1960s. Yeah. Oh my God. And whose name is this? it's it's like a oh God. It's a famous thing, but its name Lost, is escaping me. Lost in space. I think. Um, maybe. It was um. It was a. It was a. It has uh, a, an, like a human name. A, a, yes, I believe it's. It was like this little gray robot. About, but that was the first Baron instance as a normal enemy, I think, too. Um, anyway, yes, um, yes. But it was like this little tiny gray robot that had like a little tiny stick out of sticking out of it. Oh God! I For don't a second, I thought you were going to say it had a little stick up its ass. <laughs> oh, I mean, it, it might have had a stick up its ass for all I know, but. <laughs> Oh man. Anyway, that I think replaced one of the zombies. Anyway, everything was replaced at some point, including the weapons. Like the weapons, I know the plasma rifle was actually a a HUD sprite replacement uh, that was basically um, the predator. You've seen you've seen the movie Predator. Are you familiar with the I Predator? I know of. I, I I'm aware. You know of what predator, it is. But you know who yeah. the creature is. Generally, I know what it is. Yes. Yeah. So he has like a little shoulder cannon. Um, I, I at one point found a, re a plasma rifle replacement that changed it into the Predator's shoulder cannon, essentially. Oh, that's pretty badass. So, so I mean, it, it, there were all these various just, like, sprite replacements and sound replacements that were all over AOL that I just downloaded, mashed together into a WAD. And to this day, I don't know what even the WAD, again, what WAD was called. I do distinctly remember, though, one's very, very special replacement. Um, it was called the Butt Demon. Oh and God! It replaced the imp, and it was like this. It was this really bad-looking, old-school '90s uh, computer. I mean, I mean, I say bad-looking. I mean, I, I can't make a three for shit, so yeah. I don't know where I'm coming from. But it certainly was better than anything I could make. But even then, you could tell like it was kind of like a, you know, it was like if you're familiar with that show Reboot, or like any um, sort of classic like classical computer animation, yeah, like like I've seen Reboot. Like, 1980s like vi music videos and things like that it was very much like that um it was a it was a green demon with a giant ass and that giant ass <laughs> it, uh would, would would when he did his like throwing fireball animation he, he would turn around and just fling a fireball out of his ass like and that was the whole thing he was a butt demon and that's <laughs> what he did yeah that was the whole thing and so yeah well, the, I, honestly, I missed that mod. I really wish. I, I trust me. I, I have looked. I have. I have all these like floppy, uh, not floppy disks, but I have all these like CDs, like burnable CDs, like of, of all this old stuff that I've had. That's like at, at, like twenty years of like my computer presence, just of, of of having there used access to, be a soul to a computer right there. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. But yeah, I just I have I have all these discs of like all the stuff that I've done with the with the computer for almost two decades now, and unfortunately, that's just not on them. Because uh, uh, the laptop that contained that mod, uh, one day I was sitting in my room with this laptop, and my dad, I had, I had a glass of water next to that computer, and you can probably guess what happened. Like, I, my dad bumped into it and spilled the water all over my computer. Oh, God. And so that computer was basically ruined, and that mod went with it. I mean... If we still have the computer, I could probably salvage the hard drive at this point. But I don't. I think we got rid of the computer. To be completely honest, I don't know. Yeah. But with it, with that mod, and uh, that fucking sucks, it, man. It, it, it's possible that one of my friends from middle school might have it. So I should ask them. They're they're actually they might come visit me in the near future. So I might ask them uh, uh -huh. if they could bring it on a thumb drive if they could find it. I mean, I would have to describe the whole thing because again, I have no idea what it was called, but. Even less so if I even gave it away to them. I hey, don't even know, but yeah. back here. Oh, we missed a secret. Oh, we did. Yes, we did. So yeah, that that oh, sounds sure. just like a really cool mod. Well, I mean, it's a. Uh, it was certainly something. That's for sure. Up here. This secret. Yeah. So how do you activate this? So I there's actually... a line def right in front of the pillar here. You okay. just kind of have to circle around this pillar a little bit. Interesting. Oh, and these guys are in here. 
Uh, someone has informed us that Nefera's reign has had a few bad crashes and deletions in its early, early history, so you shouldn't be feeling too bad about your mod. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I also like that you're referring to them as someone, even though I, I'm 100% <laughs> positive. <laughs> it's misfit. It's misfit. Yes, of course. I'm saying someone no, I mean, because yeah, I'm, I'm really trying not to pay attention to chat, but someone oh, keeps sure. adding me. No, that's fine. <laughs> No, and yeah, Miss, but I, I, I yeah, I, I know that feeling all too well, as I said. I mean, I mean, but thankfully you had a, you clearly had a spare version of it that you could work off of, so at least it was that. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, I guess, yeah, Cube and, and then that spear thing are really the only, the only times I've really dived into that arena, but. This at one point I was talking about, like, a, an idea for a mod, and I can't remember what that idea was. I mean, there, I, I have experimented with, with game design and other avenues. Uh, there used to be a thing called uh, Click and Create. Uh huh. And that eventually became. Um, I mean, there's a variety of different versions of it. Um, it actually, Click and Create, I don't know what it's called now, but the, the software that Click and Create came from, like, like the. Like, you know, the generation that came after Click and Create is the same software that was used to create uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Awesome. So, yeah. So, the software I used once to experiment with game design was, was eventually made... the program that became... I think it was called Click Fusion eventually. It and became I think that's the most what... popular horror game of all time. Right. I, I think it's Click Fusion is what um, huh. Five Nights at Freddy's... And, and, and knowing that's, how... Stop knowing crossing that... the line. It stops the crusher. Oh. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that, actually. I didn't know you could actually stop the crusher. Oh, yeah. That is... That yeah. is when the crusher gets slow and you're guaranteed to die. Like Yeah. Basically, um every crusher so they don't they they can't just run when they start the level. Oh, motherfucking updates. Windows ten can fuck off. <laughs> anyway, well so I, I once experimented with a variety of things. I guess the really most significant thing I did was um I made a game where it was a lot like um, 1942. Did you ever play that? Oh, the uh, shooter. The yes, the, the, the shooter. old like plane shooter. It was a lot like that, except you could choose from which, which plane you wanted to use, and they had strengths and weaknesses. Like one plane was slower but did more damage. The other one was faster but did. Okay, more these damage. crushers are doing something they can't be doing in single player. Come here. Okay, I'm coming. I just picked up a, a stim pack and a soul sphere because I'm apparently a health hawk. Um. Where are you? Let's see. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm over me, by the crushers. Let me come around here. I'm trying to remember this map. Okay. But because one of them crushed me, they're, they they were able to do something that I'm that is not supposed to happen with this. They're supposed to be going at the same time. Right. But instead, like, they're supposed to be going at once up and down in synchronous. Right. But now they're not. Yeah, because I messed it up and I respawned. Right. In single player, that can't happen. Yeah, because normally you die from it. The only way I've ever seen that is like through cheating, basically, essentially. But um, yeah, so those crushers in particular cannot were, are aren't can only be in sync unless co-op mode. But yeah. anyway, so how crushers work in Doom? It's not, not how they work, but basically how that you can use them. They when the level starts, they're not automatically activated. You you need to draw a sector that does that hmm. you need to draw a sector give it the particular action of crushing and have it be activated uh by walking or a switch yeah and in this case it's a switch but at the same time if you cross over that line that same line uh for activating for uh, the walk activator switches they turn off Again, if you cross over that line a second time. So, and the way that one line covers two sectors, well, covers two sectors is you give both sectors the same action tag. Were there crushers in the first episode? I'm actually trying to remember now. No, they're not. No. There's, so this oh. is like an exclusive registered version feature. Yes, technically. Interesting. Yes. Even though pretty all the actions were available in the shareware version to have been used... It just wasn't actually programmed into any levels. Yeah. Before, Interesting. Don't go down there. You're too late. Yeah, what's the point of down here? Oh, wait. Oh, right. The, yeah, Let's there's a plasma it. rifle and a teleporter. Now, going down here... Bef 
starting up there makes this situation a whole lot easier because it just kind of gives them a funnel. Yeah. Instead of having to circle the entire fucking tower first and then work your way up. Oh, wow, that's a lot of barons. Well, there's just two. Two is still a lot. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like barons could be very over overbearing. Overbearing, if you will. Rule number one with barons, and it has been broken a couple times by Sandy Peterson, but rule number one with barons, they must come in pairs. If you got an odd number of barons, drop one. Unless you're playing Doom 2. If you got an odd number of barons in Doom 2, use a then Hell Knight. Go nuts. Oh, you're right. I always thought it was, I mean, it was a very interesting mechanic, um, well, not a mechanic, it was a very interesting design choice to make Hell Knights. I mean, I, I see the purpose of Hell Knights, but at the same time, it's like, I feel like Hell Knights could have been different. I, I really like, for example, how Doom 4 handled Hell Knights, because in Doom 4, Barons and Hell Knights are very distinct. Like, H Hell Knights are very much melee-oriented and, and fast-moving. They, 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 they are almost terrifying in the way they can get right up to you and they just start slamming you around. They're like an advanced version of a pinky demon. Um, whereas the Baron is is more traditional. It's like this really like it beefy, takes a lot of damage, and just dishes out all the same kind of character. You know, like I don't know. I, I always thought it was kind of strange. Like I mean, I, you know, it's like well, they want to have a Baron they can use more more liberally. You know, and so they created the Hell Knight. That's kind of my. That's the only thing I can think of as to why they created one in the first place. It's just mm. to have a more you know more variety in terms of just the the basic stock throw fireball character, but. I don't know. I mean, not that I'm complaining. I mean, I, I think it at least adds some... It makes Barons all the more, like, prominent, because they, they're kind of like a set piece now. Like, I mean, because they're technically a boss, I guess, right? You know, yeah, technically. So, so it kind of gives them that sort of feeling of, like, oh, that's a Baron, watch out. Like, Hell Knight's like, okay, it's a Hell Knight, or it's, you know, but, like, Barons are now a significant event, as opposed to just, like, a, a throwaway. Enemy, yeah, because know. they can sneak up on you and do their giant uh, leap slam. Oh yeah, that too. And it's almost cutscene-like if you're in the right spot. Yeah. Which, uh, uh, if I recall, Metadoom adds the uh, Leap Slam in. Have you played Metadoom? I don't think I have, actually. Are you familiar with I've been exploring with some... Uh, I, I mean, I've... You know, somebody might have told me about it at one point, but I don't, I've actually never really played it. Oh no! I got in your way, I think, and blew you up. Yeah. So, I got in the way of your rock. Metadoom is a very interesting mod that tries to bring in, uh, it, it's, it's kind of like Brutal Doom, but with actual gameplay, the way I describe it. Yeah. No offense to any Brutal Doom players or fans, it just, no, no, no. just, there's more gameplay involved than, um, it, it's it just adds, more, it, there's more variety of gameplay, it sounds like. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, yeah. There's more, like, it makes some of the enemies more like, it makes some mechanics like from the huh. other Doom games, and it retextures the weapons, adds in some extra weapons from Doom RPG, uh, the, the Doom RPGs on the iPhone. Yeah, yeah. And you can pick up treasure and stuff as well, and get hmm. points, and which is why it's called Meta Doom, is because it's a lot more, it's more like... The, it's RPG more, kind of mechanics. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. Not really RPG mechanics. If you want RPG mechanics, check out Aetherius, formerly DVDS. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's where you go for that. Correct. Also, a wonderful mod. Where the fuck did you go? I am we like like really just deep into a secret. <laughs> like, yeah. I found the, the room with the caged Baron in it. Um, fun fact about this level. You can go. This is the probably the largest level you can go through that doesn't have any key doors. Really? Yeah. There's zero key doors in this map. No key doors. Wow, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Now there should be a bridge, but that only happens when you cross over a line in that outer area. Which you basically screwed yourself out of getting. Um, you want to head to the secret exit? Oh, this is where the secret exit is? Yes. Oh, okay. I actually didn't know that. Have or didn't remember, at least. <laughs> have you seen the secret level? 
Uh, I probably have at some point, but it's actually... I am trying to remember exactly what it is. I actually do remember the secret level of episode 3. This is my favorite level. Oh, fuck. I'm... Okay, I'm gonna run back and see if the Berserk Pack respawned. So, th this secret level is actually my favorite level. My favorite secret level. Yes, it did. Great. Um... And basically because you don't realize the, uh, you don't realize the way you're supposed to approach encounters until you finish the encounter and you realized, oh shit, I was supposed to go into the next room and start infighting. And so you don't realize that until you're done with the first encounter, and it just makes it so many more levels and... You, and it's like so hard and it gives it a extra replay value because of how you play it. And we missed a large chunk of that level, but oh well. That's okay. Oh, this map! Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. So, I like to do is... I, I already failed, but what I like to do is try to go around here avoiding... Dealing with these guys while avoiding the uh, mega health and mega armor. Yeah. Which I just failed at, and now I'm at 7% health. But, um... Oh, shit. And basically... Low on ammo in general. It ends up me moving around the level like a fucking waltz. Waltz of the fucking stupid, because I... <laughs> I never get down the fucking... Uh, how do, you blocked my rockets I blocked three you times. twice four times four times and I will never forgive you they should really make it so you can just shoot through your teammates and not have rockets hit each other and I don't know that would actually if you're be doing co-op cool. it'd be interesting to do that personally I would rather have it so friendly fire is a thing okay. I think you can enable that yeah you can so okay so with this thing a lot of people think it's just repetitive, but there's a reason for this. Sandy do, d didn't want you just to rush the level. He wanted you to stay in the encounter as long as possible. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. And this is one of the best levels in the episode. The second best level in the episode. Yeah, I remember this being a very well-designed map. Yeah. I like how you can kind of fuck off and get whatever you, get whatever you want in whatever order. Yeah. Oh, I finally got to oh. see that open. Cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess, like, yeah, because you normally would never see it because you're hitting a switch. That's right. So we've kind of got sidetracked for about 30 minutes. Yeah. But, <laughs> what um, were we even talking about 30 minutes ago? <laughs> how I got into Doom. Well, right. So we mentioned my first... We, we, mentioned, we got to my first source port, which was Andronum. Right. Um, and so that's kind of how I started there. Around the same time, I was watching a stream uh so i had bought in doom and doom 2 on the same day pretty much with yeah. the master levels and final doom yeah on steam and i right. used andronum because gz doom my processor didn't like that um yeah which you can check my youtube channel if you're curious but basically in uh open gl3 mode every sector flashed in and out of existence constantly Oh, wow. Giving me a headache. And that included yeah. every single thing on the menu as well. Um, I eventually upgraded my uh, my uh, drivers, and that fixed everything. Anyway, so I played on Zandronum, and I played Brutal Doom on Zandronum as well. Hmm. I actually and... didn't know Brutal Doom was on Zandronum. Well, yeah. I guess that does make sense, because there's a lot of servers for it on Doomseeker. Oh, Zandro okay. Well, Zandronum is basically just multiplayer Z-Doom. With yeah. uh, skull tag in there as well. Well, but I, I always thought there were certain things. Zandro, that's that's why I was kind of thinking like, sometimes you you might program something into GZ Doom that wouldn't work in Zandrodom. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know enough about programming mods to know yeah. how accurate so, that is. But anyway, I started to stream right. Right. Um, I did streams of Wolfenstein 3D and Easy Wolf. Um, several months prior, I, I had also bought in Quake and Quake 2, right? So I was... Yeah. Several months... You were loaded up with all the id stuff at that yes. point. Yeah. All um, the id This games. is September... This is 2016. Okay. At the same time, I was looking up mods for Quake 2. 
And yeah. I found a wonderful video on a mod for Quake 2 that shoved in Doom, Quake 1, and Wolfenstein. <laughs> yes. So Generations Gen what introduced you to my channel. Yes. Yeah, you, the whole 40-minute overview of Generations introduced me yeah. to your channel. Nice. Which is why I really want a copy of that mod. It is a... It is a did I get it or did you get it? Oh, never mind. Uh, I got that. Yeah, right. I mean, and, and like honestly, I don't know. I mean, I that that is a mod that is, that is a, that is a mod that is definitely, you know. And, and thinking about it today, I, I've had this conversation too, where like, I've wondered whether or not like, it would really care today, if, if something it like doesn't give came a out, shit like, about they probably that wouldn't, kind of they probably wouldn't care at all. And, and honestly, even now, like. Generations as a as a product is probably not as a. I mean, it's it's technically it's technically illegal, but like, would it they wouldn't actually? Mind. It wouldn't mind. Like, did they care about Wolf and Doom? No, I mean, and well, and, and do they care about things like Sam? About probably Samsara? Not. No, no, no. I mean, they they could technically, they could technically claim copyright and yada yada yada. I mean, they could, but like, they probably just don't care enough. But I think what happened at the time. Um, was that it was just so close to, you know, because, like, Quake 2 came out pretty shortly after Quake, technically. Like, yeah. it was, like, only a year later. Well, and so, same thing with Doom 2. Doom 2 came out in September 94. Right. While Doom 3 came out in December of 93. Did or, you say or 2003? Yeah. Well, you said Doom You said Doom 3. I meant I Doom like, 1. Wait. Yeah, Doom 1. Well, yeah, I, I think just the fact that all these games came out pretty i mean you know like they were pretty much one after another and a lot it's like maybe a year gap here and there but like they yeah. were all pretty much released around the same time and so i think what ended up happening is like it was just kind of off-putting and plus back then you know it just really wasn't it just wasn't the same atmosphere of like of you know what i mean like of, of yeah. uh it just wasn't the same kind of culture around it like it just yeah no. they they saw like oh they're like they're stealing all of our property and and i, I don't know like I don't know precisely what went through their heads, but they just they just kind of, um, you know, they were like, well, you're going to have to change all of this because, like, I don't know. And, and and the designers of the game are like, well, that would kind of ruin the whole experience. So, or the designers of the mod, I should say. like. So that's why know. they kind of went on to make Generations for Quake 3, right? Right. Yeah, because like, then they didn't have to necessarily use, like, the original assets. They can just build their own assets. and. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. But anyway, but yeah, like so I don't know, it was just it's really interesting how that all turned out. So I was so yeah, I was getting into Xandronum and using that as my source port. Um one of the Doom streamers I was watching at the time, his name was BZ Plasma. He's had some kind of he's had some rel some issues with the community, um, or and they've had issues with him and vice versa. I've he's he's never been not nice to me, uh, so for that I consider him a friend. Yeah. Um, nice, relatively nice guy. Yeah. Good dude at heart. But sometimes he can get a little riled up easily. Anyways, uh, that wasn't the point of the story, but I was watching him too. He's a great guy. Um, and... That's kind of where I learned about Brutal Doom from, because he played random Doom mod. Oh, did you die? I did. That's all right. He that was played... not your fault. He just the Baron straight up killed me. Yeah, he plays. Ran... He played. He used to stream random Doom mods of him playing. Uh, of him playing random Doom mods of Doom Two, and then he'd give them a review. Yeah. With Brutal Doom. Oh, you beat me that time, by the way. I did. <laughs> you did. You got seven more kills than I did. Oh, we're competing. Nice. Well, no, we're not. I, I just kind of was looking, looking at yeah. beat levels. I'm like oh, now, we're... this is the best level in the episode. Th Hands I remember this down. being a very cool level. Yeah, the texturing could have used work, but damn, is it a good level? Yeah. Oh, fun fact: once you cross into this hallway, god damn it, is we can't. I can't go in because oh. I can't in clip. But once you cross <laughs> into that hallway, once um, you go in, like what I'm doing right now, actually. <laughs> Yeah, so the back of the door, which is your side of the door, uh, uses a step texture. In early source ports and the DOS version, it's a tutti-frutti effect. 
Oh, yes, the whole, like, Hall of Mirrors almost look. No, not a Hall of Mirrors. It literally, oh. uh, the texture kind of repeats in an awkward way, and all the colors are changed to, and all the colors are kind of changed to look kind of, like, fruity. Like, hmm. fruit and stuff. Yes, yes, no, yeah, I got you. I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to remember if I ever saw that back in the day. I've shown you screenshots of me, of uh, a tutti fruity effect when I've fucked up with Chocolate Doom. Hmm. Oops, I just grabbed an invulnerability that I probably didn't need. Oh, well. Let me see if I can make use of it. You could probably Here, actually, make use of it if you picked up the Berserk pack early there and you just Berserk the fucking Baron. That's actually a lot of fun, Berserking Barons. Oh, yes. I did, I did, uh... I do enjoy just melee in general. That's why, like, when I play Hexen now, I, I really enjoy the fighter. It's just... There's something really satisfying about playing a melee character. But... What, what were we talking about? Oh, Generations, right. Um, yeah, so I, I saw your video on that, and I, I really got into your channel. Yes. Uh, obviously, otherwise, if I didn't get into your channel, we probably wouldn't probably be Probably wouldn't be where we are now. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of... Around that same time, I started streaming Wolfenstein. Yeah. Um, I streamed my way through Wolfenstein uh, 3D and... I streamed my way through the uh, original encounter, which is it. It's you're familiar with the Super Nintendo campaign of Wolfenstein, right? Oh yeah, yeah. It's a lot like the. I think it's actually based off the Macintosh campaign. No, 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 no. no. This this came first. Oh, this, oh the, this, the Super Nintendo did. Super Nintendo version came first, and then the uh, that level set was reused for the uh, Jaguar campaign. Oh, okay. And the 3DO version came with both the six episodes and that encounter. Interesting. And it's, it's and called same the, with the it, Mac version. Is it called the second encounter? Or it's what's called, it called the original encounter on the, the uh, on the 3DO version. Oh, okay. But the Mac version, its shareware episode was uh, its shareware episode was the first three levels of that, and that's called the first encounter, and the rest of the, those 30 levels are called the second encounter. So, anyway, so I played through the original counter because some fans remade the original counter for EC Wolf. Yeah. So I streamed through the uh, Wolfenstein six episodes and then the original counter, which I love the original counter. They made the Super Nintendo port with the original counter all in three weeks. That's pretty impressive. I mean, um, it seems like. It wasn't on purpose. Mm. GT Interactive had hired a guy to do that. And the guy uh, took his money and ran. Hmm. No way to contact him at all. Just took his money and ran. So, six weeks before the due date for id Software to turn that in, GT Interactive called him like, Hey, have you talked to the guy? He's supposed to make the port. And like, we haven't talked to the guy. Where's the guy? It's they like spent three gonna, weeks he's, he's trying to find the guy. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That and there is happen. no guy. Yeah. So they spend three more weeks making the port. And that is the Super Nintendo port of Wolfenstein. Made 30 levels and re completely rebuilding the engine from the ground up, learning how to make stuff for the Super Nintendo as well, in three weeks. That's pretty nuts. That, yeah. Mind-bending. Mind so anyway, so I streamed my way through that. Yeah. And interesting thing about that stream. Uh, I hit the stream button, but when I finished streaming... I went to check the VOD. No VOD. <laughs> well, it didn't output. Oh wait, you didn't actually stream at all. No. Not even like no recording, no no like archive or anything. It just didn't. No. It, didn't it didn't do anything. Didn't do. Didn't do dog shit. <laughs> oh well. So I luckily I had done it over multiple streams, so I didn't have to start from the beginning. But I did half the campaign in the evening in one evening pretty much but nobody saw it yeah so i had to go back again and i was fucking pissed i can imagine so i mean yeah 
So then from there I got to I played through Spear of Destiny. I love Spear of Destiny as well. Pretty Spear much Spear of Destiny definitely is a pretty good good level set. I mean yeah. I only played it for the first time fairly recently. I think I I, I, I remember that actually. stream. I remember yeah, that yeah. stream. I, I streamed that actually. So I uh so from there I streamed up till like Spear of Destiny is like twenty one levels, I think. I think so, yeah. Um, I, I got up to the second last boss, the Uber Mutant, uh, maybe a level or so after. Oh, God. It's coming. It's coming, John. Where is it? Oh, there, oh, he's, of course he's stuck. He always gets stuck in one of these rooms. Come on out. I remember it's watching... It's been a while since I've seen a vanilla cyber demon. Oh, God. So... I actually, so when I was a kid, uh, the cyber demon actually gave me nightmares. I like, I had, these, I had these nightmares of, like, that stomping sound coming towards me and, like, hiding from it and, like, I don't, like, I don't know. The cyber demon kind of freaked me out as a kid. I've had but, a few dreams of doom. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I can't even remember all of them, but, like, yeah. <laughs> like, um, definitely had quite a few. Yeah. Uh, that one was a recurring, oh, I just killed it. But that was nice. a recurring thing where, uh, oh, we don't get the intermission text. Oh, Unfortunately, well. no. Uh, you want to call another vote or we can. Well, I well, So what we talked about is doing two episodes. Yeah. I, I still think that would be a cool. This could still be a good stopping point. But yeah. So uh, but I, yeah, but I was going to say, yeah, I don't know. For whatever reason. Yeah. I, yeah. Cyber demons just scared me. It was just a very distinct. I'm going to whole yeah. topic. Thing. Let's finish, quickly wrap up my topic and then yeah. the topic we we're on and then we'll close off. Sure, so sure. from there, right stream, I didn't finish Spear of Destiny. Yeah. Um, you put up an announcement video that you were streaming. Yes. At that point. And I decided oh, I'll pop and say hi. Uh, we talked a little bit. You recommended uh, mod. What was that mod? Wasn't you were playing? You were playing Arcane Dimensions at the time, but it wasn't Arcane Dimensions. Ah. Hmm. Oh, so it probably was. Well, I'll, you know, because a lot of the time. It's your favorite like... gameplay mod, and I, I forget the name of it, but it was made Rapid by the guy Chronos? who did. No, uh, the guy who made Don's Challenge. What was the? Oh, other thing? Moral Conduct. Yeah, Immoral Conduct. So you recommended that, and. Yes. I also became friends with Misfit and Serious Cackle Demon. Shout out to you guys. Hi. Um, so, I kind of... I continued streaming, and I did my first playthrough of Doom with Misfit and Serious Cackle Demon watching me fail like a dumbass. <laughs> um, I also played through with Brutal Doom as well. And... Um, which, after I did a full playthrough of Doom 1 with Brutal Doom... Brutal Doom kind of got tedious and boring to play. Yeah. Fun as hell to think, watch, but not... I, yeah, honestly, I, I think it's pretty... I've said this before, and I, I just I just think Brutal Doom is just a little overrated. I mean, you know, everything that it does, I have seen other mods do better. I mean, it does have the fatality mechanic, which I guess is interesting, but I don't know. Most mods that I've played besides Brutal Doom have been far more interesting to me. Yeah. Anyway, so, so there's my soapbox rant on that. But, yes. Yeah, <laughs> anyway. um, and I pretty much agree with you. Uh, yeah. Nothing wrong if you do like and play Brutal Doom. Yeah, Brutal totally. Doom, yeah. Um, nothing wrong with it. Yeah. So, yeah, I did some more streaming of Doom. I found my favorite map set of Doom, which is Switcher Room. Uh, yes, I've heard about that one. It's a fantastic map set uh, run by Jaws in Space. Um, so, I also made a map which we talked about, Jane and Hangar, which you played. Yes. Um, and I also made a map set sometime this year. But yeah, that's kind of my story with Doom, and we went through your story of Doom. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, yeah. the only other additions are, well, besides making the YouTube channel. Uh, yeah. And I, I, I could save that story for next time as to yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Why I made the YouTube channel and what led to all that. Yeah, that'll be good. Um, so yeah, that, that actually would be really good fodder for the next time we do this because yeah. I think that'd be. It's kind of like kind of like a little backstory on all this. So, I mean, the only other thing I could say about Doom, I don't, I mean, there's not much else to say. I mean, I I went on to play Quake and I went on to play Quake Two and just pretty much all the id games. So, I don't know. I just kind of followed that 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 line all the way up to now. So, I mean, there's 
aside from what I've already described about my history of Doom, there's not much more to it. I just I got really into playing mods in, in, in the early 2000s, late 90s, and just kind of threw out pretty much ever since modding really took off, like in the 2000s, where uh, we had source port mods and things like that. That's when, and that was by then I was in high school and a little bit into college. Like that was all, that was a lot of my, my gaming. It was just like, I already have this game and I can just plug in something that's awesome and and play it and just... I don't know, like that, that, just the whole fact that that was kind of like free entertainment or like really getting value out of a product that you already own. That's what I really love about modding is like it extends the life of a game and it's free. I mean, all you have to do is buy one thing and you have access to endless content like that yeah. is still being made today. Like that's why Doom is the best game of all time to me is because it is still going 25 years later and there's so much content for it that you could probably spend a lifetime playing it yeah and have it be the only game you ever play and you'd yeah. probably be satisfied with that you know like it's just one of those games where it just there's there's probably always going to be new mods always going to be content for this game mm -hmm. it's going to go on probably long after i'm dead i guarantee you people will still be making stuff for it mm -hmm. like it's just one of those games man um anyway you know i'm i'm staring at you your, your character like this and while you're talking do you know what it's reminding me of what you ever wonder why we're here Oh, what is that from? Is that <laughs> Red from versus Wayne? Blue. Red versus, Red versus Blue. Blue. Oh my god, I haven't watched that in ages. I love the the oh, early Red versus Blue stuff. Like the first five seasons are so good. Anyways, I'd be think... more appropriate if it was like that. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can so you I... see my color change as I'm doing this? No. Uh, you have to oh. exit the menu to uh, change. There you yeah. Go. Now you're red, and, and I'm <laughs> blue. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna switch back anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think I think this is a good spot to just kind of end it. Close so, out? Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I've I been Joss the NES nerd. Yes, and I have been Wham Ninjimal Hill. Yes. My, AKA so, John. Yes. Um, this has been the uh, Nerd Hill Co-op Podcast. Yes, which is a great name. I really like that name. <laughs> I It was a throw in a name for the server when we were playing what? Zandronum or Zidu or co-op this weekend what but were we works. playing plutonia yeah yes yeah yeah we were experimenting with plutonia this weekend well yeah. not even experimenting we were just kind of playing it and, and yeah. we just kind of like why don't we just kind of do this on stream and kind of turn it into sort of a show and it's like i don't know and, and then here we are so yeah. i think it sounds like i mean it sounds yeah. like we're gonna try to do this every week right i mean every hopefully. every tuesday possibly yeah i mean hopefully. permitting our our, our com collective schedules i mean we could potentially our, our plan too, if you don't mind me saying, I think we're just gonna we're definitely gonna finish Doom One. I don't know if I'll spoil what we might do next, but at the very least, we want to finish Doom One and kind of continue this sort of format. So, yeah, um, I and, think, and you know, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think people will look at what we do next and think of it as a little uh, blasphemous. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Um, it'd be very. Uh, could be very um, heretical. Yes, blasphemous. Yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely is the word for that. Yes. Hold on. I might have some other synonyms for that. Hold on. <laughs> it, would, it would. I mean, it would be. It would be very. Um, it would be very much against the established order. Yes. You know. Yes. Um. um but much... that's after episode three and four. <laughs> yes. I mean. Yeah. 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 We still have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Still have a long way to go before blasphemy starts happening you know, yes but we are ex before we are excommunicated from uh all right i think that's enough puns for now but yes um i've been josh and yes i'm john wham whichever yeah. you want to call me i go by both <laughs> and uh yeah i'll let you close things out it is your stream ultimately yes um but there is uh an interesting question posed which i shouldn't be paying attention to the chat but there was an interesting question posed Will okay. guests be allowed to show up? Um, excellent question, Lord Misfit. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll send John Romero an email at some point. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it'd be cool at some point if we had other people on. Like, you know, like other people in our community that, you know, I think since we're just starting, probably at first it'll just be us. But I mean, you know, as, as this thing goes on and evolves, I yeah. mean, sure. We could eventually bring on other people, like maybe other modders or masters yeah. and and kind of pick yeah. their brain on stuff too while and maybe even have them co-op with us i mean yeah all in all though this, expect... this is an experiment yeah absolutely i yeah. mean it, it's yeah this is very much an experiment I, I could definitely see it going a variety of but uh you know for now it's just an experiment and 
Yeah. yeah, but I mean, I'm certainly open to that idea, 100%. Yeah, me too. So, um, so. so yeah, this has been uh, the uh, Nerd Hill Co-op Podcast. And yes. we are signing off. Absolutely. Good night. Later. <laughs>